Good morning and welcome back to the Kristen Omdahl Show. This is episode 958 and we're here live in Southwest Florida at the beach. This is the beautiful Gulf of Mexico behind me. If you are joining me live, please say hello if you feel comfortable. If you don't feel comfortable, I'm saying hello to you anyway. Uh, if you have questions for me, always feel welcome to ask me live. That's the beauty of doing this show live is that we get to interact and talk together in real time. And if you would like to share what you've been working on, what you've been crafting or creating, I know we are all very like-minded, creative people here in this lovely community that we've cultivated together and uh, I know I would love to hear about it and so would everyone else. Hi Judy, hi Grace, hi Marianne, hi Sabrina, good morning, hi Donna and Judy, Sean, Irene, Pamela, Eve, Kiran G. Good morning everybody, happy Thursday aka Friday Eve. Hi Karen, I can't believe it's Thursday already, this week has flown by. Hi Karen, good morning. Another Karen. Hi, Karen. Hi, Judy. Good morning. Happy Thursday, everybody. Welcome back to the Kristen Omdahl Show. This is episode 958. Hi, Lori and Lily and Julie. Thank you for taking time out of your busy day to spend a few minutes here with me. Got a few things to share with you today. Hi, Kathy and Wendy, Marla, Angela, Joe. Yes, last month of the year, it's almost 2022. Hard to believe, definitely. It's gone so fast. It's a nice mild day here. There's uh, a little bit of wind, but certainly nothing, uh, nothing that's nothing beyond a relaxing, gentle breeze, which is nice. The water is calm, which is, neither here nor there. I love the water no matter what the water does. But I do know we all prefer minimal breeze. <laughs> it's hard to get at the beach. Hi Pamela, good morning. Hi Angela. I have a new pattern to show you today. The one that I'm wearing, it's a knit party wrap vest. Super duper easy to make. You have seen me uh, share my progress as I was knitting it for a couple of months, I suppose, on and off. And it is done. This is what it looks like. It is knit side to side. And the instructions show you how to make the wrap, how to add the collar, and there are instructions to also make sleeves. I just didn't put the sleeves on yet. I'm not even sure I'm going to, but it was really important to me that I made the sleeves so that I could tell you exactly how much yarn it would take to make the sleeves. So the wrap on its own is a four ball project and each of the sleeves is a one ball, is one ball each. So to make the entire thing with sleeves is around six balls and to make the wrap without the sleeves is four balls. I'm gonna take it off so I can show you the construction of it. It's really interesting. Yes, it's always good to have options. I agree, Grace. There is a schematic too, so if you don't understand the construction, the schematic will explain it a little better. This is super drapey and we're standing up, so it may not look like a rectangle, but it is a rectangle. And so it starts along like this edge here, work sideways, bind off for an arm opening, cast back on, and work straight across. Do that again for the second armhole opening and then work straight across and bind off. No increases or de decreases there. Then along that top edge, we pick up and knit along that top edge and you notice there is some shaping in the collar. That's optional. If the shaping intimidates you, you could work even in rows. You don't have to do the collar shaping, but I did do a little bit of short row shaping and I did it uh, specifically in garter stitch because it is a stitch pattern that does not require a wrap and turn technique, which means I feel like it's an easier way to introduce the technique of short rows when you do it in garter stitch. If you prefer wrap and turn technique, obviously use that. If you don't like doing short rows at all, you don't have to do it. You could just make the collar as wide as the center part but on all parts and it would just take a little more yarn to do that so you might need to you know dip into a an extra ball 
um, but that means that there's options so depending on what you're comfortable doing and knitting there are options overall it is a very simple stitch pattern a uh, very simple project and the sleeves use the same stitch pattern but this is knit marla this is a uh, knit in rows here and then knit in the round in the sleeve so it's really interesting that you get the opportunity to learn the stitch pattern both in rows and rounds to create the same texture and look and that way you have both of those techniques in your arsenal then so you are able to use the stitch pattern in rows or rounds to make anything else you could make a hat in the stitch pattern you could make a scarf in the stitch pattern you could make an afghan in the stitch pattern once you have the instructions to do something in rows and rounds it opens up your world even more than just having a stitch pattern in one or the other so anytime i feel like i can add both to a pattern i feel like it just makes the pattern that much more valuable to you because then you have both versions to reuse for other things as well so once you know how to work in the round, let's see, what else can you make? A bag, a hat, a cowl, um, a sleeve, a body. There's all sorts of things you can make in the round separate from the things that you could make in rows. You could make a pieced garment. You could make a front, a back, and two sleeves flat in a stitch pattern. You don't necessarily have to uh, knit knit a sweater in the round right you could always do it flat in pieces as well leggings yes leggings or leg warmers you could do in the round as well and then in rows obviously a scarf a rectangular wrap a shawl um, a scarf a headband any of the things we talked about in the round with a seam you could do in rows as well an afghan a baby blanket like you could anything two-dimensional anything and when you make things in two-dimensional you still have the option of being able to sew up seams to make them three-dimensional as well so really so much you can do once you have that type of content and learn what a stitch pattern can and can't do and what the multiple is really the sky's the limit to what you can do with it at that point another interesting thing is that with this stitch pattern it blends really beautifully with ribbing so um this is a knit one pearl one rib and then i follow and then i did some increases in pattern which you'll understand when you see the pattern and continued on with the texture correctly so that it blends beautifully from one by one rib to uh this particular stitch pattern which is also really cool and really beautiful. And so when you learn that technique in this pattern, you can apply that to other things too. Imagine doing that for a hat, doing that ribbing for the brim of the hat and then switch. Someone's calling me, I had to try to decline the call. Yeah, so there's other things that you could do with that as well. <clears throat> Does anybody have any questions about that? Again, for the people sharing that uh, this is not hard at all, Susan, this, these are very simple stitch patterns. And the pattern spells it out for you, but if you don't knit, obviously this isn't for you. If you want to learn to knit, you could. If you don't, it's fine. I have hundreds of crochet patterns as well, and you are not limited to just my patterns. You can, uh, there are probably hundreds of thousands of knit or crochet patterns, something for everybody under the sun out there. Uh, whether you want to learn something new or not learn something new, it's okay. Thank you, Sabrina. I love it too. I think it's very pretty. I think it's very functional. Uh, it was fun to knit. It was quick to knit up. Yeah, it's just too, uh, yeah, it's just knit and purl. That's all we're doing in this pattern, just knit and purl. It's not difficult at all. It's where we put the knit and purls that make it, uh, that change it from a knit one purl one rib to this stitch pattern and then to the collar but it's really just knit one and knit and purl that's all
anybody have any questions, the pattern's available on my website. So is Be So Easy Yarn. This is Color Fuchsia. Judy has shared links to everything in the live chat, which I appreciate, and I know everybody else does too, so thank you, Judy. They will also be available in the show notes in the video description when the show's over, and everything we're talking about is available on my website, and you can find it at any time that it's convenient for you. Does anybody have any questions? Thank you, Karen. I love this color too. I did wear it with a top that has some pink in it today. And yesterday, it, or in the photos that you'll see on my website, I, um, I, uh, what was I going to say? I wore it with navy blue blouse with some purple in it. And the pink and the purple I thought looked really cute together too. Um, but you know, pick a color when you're making an accessory like this, a layering piece. Pick a color that coordinates with your wardrobe or pick a color that coordinates with something that, uh, colors that are flattering to you, or go with a pop of color and make it the accessory, right? You could wear all neutrals, whether black, brown, tan, gray, silver, charcoal, or whatever neutral, and make a bright color that you love and make that your pop of color too. Thank you, Sabrina, I appreciate it. Okay, someone asked if I named the hooded scarf that I was working on yesterday. Um, I get, I'm not quite sure, I believe I did, but I named a bunch of stuff in the last couple days, so I'm not sure, and it doesn't really matter today because it's not available yet, uh, but when it's available, I will definitely share all that with you. I, uh, I'm not 100% sure on which of the names I named yesterday actually went to the hooded scarf, so that will have to wait. I have, as I've been working on book 21, I have discovered that I think I've found a way to pretty easily teach advanced beginners how to take almost any crochet stitch pattern and convert it into a top-down increasing shawl. How exciting does that sound to anybody? I think that that's probably something that, unless you are truly an advanced crocheter or in knitter too probably, or somebody who actually designs or does graphic design. I feel like this is something that's probably off limits to a regular craft, um, something that feels off limit to you most of the time. Would that be interesting to you if I could teach you how to pretty much take any stitch pattern? Um, obviously there'll be exceptions to the rule, but most regular stitch patterns I can, I've, as I've been exploring the reference section of the book that I'm working on, I've realized that it, I think it's, it's been very easy for me to do and I recognizing what are the components that I could easily teach. Um, uh, it's going to be part of the book, but it should probably be a class as well. Thanks for mentioning that, Tammy. Yeah, it's very exciting. So I'll show you one of them. So. For example, this is the Moringa. This is the Moringa shawl. I've shown you the Cardi wrap and the shawl, and it's a really pretty delicate. Um, it's a pretty delicate offset mini pineapple stitch pattern that's offset, kind of like a little strawberry. And with my technique that I um, have been working on for the book, I was able to easily, without without much fuss turn it into a top-down triangular shawl that it's perfectly symmetrical and perfectly repeating. And I've done this on five different stitch patterns this week. Uh, it's been pretty amazing to see how easy this is to do. Um, so I think it'll be super easy to teach as well. And there are even options. So uh, as I teach where to find, uh, where to find the pattern, where to find the pattern within the pattern, how to create the spines for the single increase on the sides and the double increase down the center. I feel like I can come up with options. And I, there's a lot, I think I'm onto something. <laughs> so I'm excited, I'm excited to get it finished and get it uh, off to you guys because I think you're going to really enjoy it too. It's just another way to empower crafters to be able to explore on their own and do things on their own. So. Uh, I always like finding ways to empower other people to be able to have the confidence to explore on their own rather than just feel completely tied into patterns. Um, I can't always read the full 
thick comments in the live chat because they do go by so fast. So if your comment is something that's super important to you, uh, please always feel welcome to re-comment uh, re when the video is no longer live. And if that's not enough, always feel welcome to email customer service, email Judy, J-U-D-I at KristenAmdahl.com. And you can get your, uh, we can try to answer your questions there as well. <sighs> Does anybody have any questions? Okay, I don't see any questions. Let's look around the beach what everything looks like. I don't think we're going to make it the full 30 minutes this morning. My phone is blowing up. Um, Marlon, uh, Jess is sick and Marlon's debating, uh, not sick, sick. She's got female stuff and, uh, might need to go to the doctor or the hospital. So I, uh, not sure what's going on in my phone's going crazy so I might need to end the show early to find out what's going on with them you know it happens the beach is so beautiful today isn't this lovely yeah but as my phone keeps ringing and keeps dinging so I do believe I'm gonna need to uh, end the show early to make sure they are okay I hope you understand we will definitely be back live again tomorrow. Same time, same place, if the weather allows. <laughs> yes, it is very quiet here at the beach this morning. Thank you all so much for taking time out of your busy day to spend a few minutes with me. I hope you enjoyed the sunrise, the beach, my show and tell, chatting with me and everyone else. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. Have a wonderful day, everybody, and I will see you tomorrow. Same time, same place. Bye-bye.